Oh, out of the way! Sorry, I didn't mean it. Your art is great. Really! Every work of art is a hit. Welcome back to today's build. I'll be your guide to this wonderful game we all love. Let's get started. Today's deck is a work of art. His name is Angelo the Painter, and this is the Murder Mural. Angelo is a 1-3 vampire assassin that lets us copy our first instant or sorcery each turn by sacrificing two or more power on board. Like Calamax, we only copy our first spell each turn, but unlike Calamax, Angelo requires an extra resource to be able to copy our spells. So if we lean into that first spell each turn wording, we'll run out of cards. Instead, we're going to try to cast one big spell each turn, starting the turn after we play on Hello with spells of mana value 4. Since the copies let us skip the costs, including additional costs, we're incentivized to play costlier spells, but because the Grixis colors aren't great at ramping, we'll also want to cap the mana value at something we can reasonably get to. I wouldn't recommend more than 7, and I personally kept it to 6. Another axis this deck wants to emphasize is that the creatures we want to sacrifice are going to be those whose death pushes forward our game plan whenever we can, not bodies whose only purpose is to fuel our spells. To start with, on Hello's EDH rec page is polluted with effects from Phyrexia All Will Be One. Between cards that poison and cards that proliferate, it appears on Hello Brewers were excited to build a Spell Slinger Poison deck, but nothing about on Hello says to use poison. All he says is Spellslinger with a side of Sacrifice, served with two power creatures. To be clear, at this stage there is every possibility that we just end up playing Poison. When I start building a deck, one thing I'll do is add 10 or so of the best cards I can find and see if there are any themes common to those cards. So if the most impactful spells we can copy end up being Poison cards, then we'll play Poison. But there's no way that cards like Blightbelly Rat, Gulping Scrap Trap, Techufall, Mirror Convert, Phyresis Outbreak, Liva Surgeon's Insight, Drown and Nicker, Distorted Curiosity, or Vat Emergence make that list. Other offenders include Whisper of the Tross, Serum Snare, Experimental Augury, Mind Splice Apparatus, and on and on. The second category of cards worth cutting is a bit more controversial. These 4 plus mana spells that aren't. See, if this were any of the other Copy My Spells decks, like Zevlor or Kalamax, we might not be playing creatures at all. Kalamax's creature count takes a big backseat to the instance in the deck, because every creature that we draw is a card that we can't copy. And in this deck, since we're trying to maximize the costs of our spells within a range to get the most value, any turn that we play a creature or enchantment, anything that we can't copy, is probably a turn where we don't have enough mana left to copy anything. The only reason this deck plays creatures at all is because on Hello's ability specifically needs you to, so the bar for what creatures we can actually include is already set, and it's very high. We need creatures to sacrifice, whose sacrifice develops our strategy beyond just being sack fodder. I'll discuss some of these cards briefly, but my instinct here is still to cut most if not all of these. With Double Vision we can get an additional copy of our first spell slung each turn, but on Hello already copies our first spell each turn. The difference between one and two copies of a spell is bigger than the difference between two and three copies of a spell. This is five mana to do nothing the turn it comes in. It's not an instant, a sorcery, or a creature, which are all the card types our commander cares about. It doesn't interact with our graveyard at all. It doesn't generate bodies for us. I'm just really unimpressed with this for five mana. If we want an additional copy of our spells, then Twinning Staff already does more than enough at a much better rate, and I still don't have that high an opinion of it. Talrond is bad and so is Poppet Stitcher, but at least the Stitcher is better than Talrond. With less mana and less overflow, we really don't need to produce an arbitrary number of tokens, just enough to chain together into the next spell. Feed the Swarm is not what we want for this deck. The life we pay is not as a cost to cast the spell, it's just an effect of the spell, so we end up losing a lot of life with this spell. Army of the Damned is a fantastic haymaker, but 8 mana and 3 black pips is a tall order for Grixis and does not win us the game, it just makes us a threat for the turn cycle. Waste management at least lets us hold up blockers, can do more with less mana, and can be graveyard hate for our opponents. Dika is better than Metallurgic Summoning and Shark Typhoon, but they're all too much mana to do nothing that turn. Not to mention that we lose a lot of the power they make on board when we casualty. 
and we only need two power. And since we're trying to maximize the mana value of our spells within a range, we're going over the top to no benefit. Magnus the Red is expensive. Cost reduction is great, but it's doing the most work when we cast multiple spells each turn. But since Unhello only cares about our first spell each turn, the infrastructure in our deck primarily cares about only the first of these spells, so we're leaving a lot of value from Magnus on the table. The same is true for Wizards of Fae and any other cost reducers. Though, the wizards actually give us tokens without needing to connect first, and the ability to cast without timing restrictions in combat can save the wizards, not to mention give us a bigger discount. I like this one better, but I'm probably still cutting it. Stormkill Artist is really, really good, and probably the hardest of these cuts to make, but it's also kind of clunky for this deck. When exactly are we meant to cast this? If we play at turn 4, it'll be turn 5 before we get to copy anything with Unhello, let alone make any treasures. Meanwhile, our opponents get another cycle around the table to remove either on Hello or the Artist. There are so many other spells I'd rather be playing on turn 4, like Big Score or Unexpected Windfall, that would generate treasures and draw us cards. And if we draw the Artist later in the game, the treasures may not be that usable to us, given that we're only copying one spell each turn. It's borderline, but I still think it should go. Sulfan does nothing for us, and it's laughable that it even shows up in this list. If we cut the storm kill artist, there's no way we're keeping Sultan. Mana Geyser is good, but not good enough. To reiterate, not unlike the card Reiterate, even though we want to play expensive spells, if we're going to be casting them consistently, then we have to limit how big those costs are, so a lot of the VAT mana isn't going towards our first spell each turn, since this is our first spell each turn, and since we only get casualty on the first spell, double spelling won't be very useful here. We don't have any activated abilities, so there's nowhere to sink that mana into. We just don't need this kind of mana generation. Cryptic Pursuit is better than Kess and Maestro's Ascendancy, but they all suffer from the same timing issues as other 4 mana spells that aren't eligible for casualty. And the Ascendancy actually eats up even more resources that we don't really have to spare. Like Wilson, we're not trying to overwhelm our opponents with tokens, we're just trying to have enough bodies to feed to our commander's ability, and the Ascendancy chews through our resources way too fast, while Kess does nothing to turn through the deck herself. Chain Reaction is so many things that we don't want. To start with, any board wipe will wipe away our bodies and our commander, leaving us to start at square one, and the amount of damage is just overkill. If we need board wipes, we have better options, like Vampire's Vengeance, which will at least leave our commander intact. So what's our timeline? Turn 1, we're not doing a lot. In our opening hand, we need lands to fix our mana and plays for turn 2 and 4. But if we're lucky enough to have a 1 drop, we can play Rotten Reunion, Tide Shaper, and Lifetime Pass Holder. It's not an attraction focused deck, but there are a few that are really useful for us, best of all being Haunted House and Tide Shaper can alternatively come down turn 2 to disrupt an opponent's early plays, while Reunion can make a body for us now and be Graveyard 8 later. On turn 2, we're playing a 2-power creature that can die and push forward our plan. We're looking at Guild Sworn Prowler, Riveteer's Requisitioner, and Broker's Veteran, each either giving us a resource on death or protecting our commander. We're also playing Sinister Concierge, Vengeful Strangler, and Watcher for Tomorrow for removal and card draw, while Dogged Detective, Jadar and Carrier Thrill provide a recursive value and card selection, which will amplify the effects of our later spells. Turn 3 is our target for when we're playing our commander, which means we need to have fixed our mana by now, and be playing an untapped land. The fast lands from All Will Be One are nice, but climbing in price, so these allied filter lands are a good substitute. Turn 4 is where we start driving. With our commander in play and a 2 power body on the field, we can copy Siphon Mine, Channel Force, or Smashing Success to generate cards or mana, as well as slow down our opponents who have likely ramped by now. We'll also play Honor the God Pharaoh, Crush Descent, and Revenge of the Drowned to generate advantage and interaction while keeping the fires burning on our two power creatures. Big Score, Pirate's Prize, and Pirate's Pillage do the job of digging through our deck and making sure we have mana ramp and fixing to chain into bigger and bigger plays on future turns. With the full grip and mana to spare, on turn 5 and beyond we can cast what's probably the strongest card in our deck. Because so many of our spells cost exactly 4 mana, we can copy Baral's expertise to annihilate enemy boards and pull so far ahead they will never catch up. If we have it, this is also how we'd like to play out Ralstorm Storm Conduit or Twinning Staff. 
We're also playing Kill, Maim, Burn, Modify Memory, and Chandra's Ignition to further disrupt enemy board presence. Chandra's Ignition is particularly nice because something people seem to forget about our commander is that Angelo has Death Touch. This is a one-sided board wipe, and Modify Memory might just disable our opponent's decks while drawing us cards and giving us more bodies. Bond of Insight, Hostile Negotiations, and Factor Fiction can find us more ammunition, and since our commander is a vampire, if we're behind, copying Arterial Flow from under the floorboards or Blood Tithe can be a terror to our opponents and restore our life total if we are vulnerable to attack because of how few creatures we have to block with. Not to mention that we can discard from under the floorboards to any of our red discard to draw spells, or that Necrologia wants us to have a lot of life. Other great plays these turns include Inspired Tinkering, Enter the God Eternals, or Illuminate History to dig through the deck and set up more resources for our endgame. There are so many ways to close out the game here. With all the interaction we have, we can make sure our opponents are short on blockers, and take out a player with commander damage through Hatred as early as turn 5, or make infinite dual caster mages with a Heat Shimmer combo, or deal infinite damage copying anything with Fury Storm and Rile in play, or even just good old fashioned damage from Blood Tithe and Fiery Confluence. And with all the cards in the deck that dig for cards while also generating advantage and interaction, we are very likely to draw these pieces very quickly. In terms of power, we're certainly not winning by turn 6 reliably, and unlike Calamax, the extra resources that we have to commit to the board in order to copy our spells at all slows us down enough that we're probably not winning by turn 6 ever. So the ceiling here is a 7, and that's surely where a deck as explosive and interactive as Onello belongs. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching!